Uh, yeah, so I'm just up at um, Arthur's Pass. I'm doing something different this time around. I'm going for a camping trip up the Howden Valley. Um, I'm just going to walk up the valley a wee ways um, and find somewhere to put my tent up and then that'll be made for the day. Yeah, so we'll see where we get to. So uh, this is the start of the Howden Valley track going up to the Howden Valley. That's the uh, start of the track up to Walshed Hill. Um, I'm going to go up there sometime. There's a tarn um, up the hill a wee bit with excellent views that you can camp around. So I just make my way uh, across and down to the Howden River and then I'll cross over the Howden River. Yeah, um, it's about maybe five minutes walk away. I'm packing heavy on this tr tramp. I've probably got about maybe 15 kilos of gear on my pack. It's bloody heavy. Heading down to the river. Yes, the Howden River. It sometimes be quite hard to cross, but it's not looking too bad today. Shouldn't be that hard to get across. So we're just going to those um, banks on the other side over there. So do you crossing over just up the river there from me? There's my river crossing point. Just heading for the fence line over there. Uh, there's a style on the fence there, you have to use this fence as electric. Um, so you got to be careful when you cross over it because that top wire is electric as well. Yeah. Sudden Valley Stream there. I'm gonna head up Sudden Valley Stream. So I'm just heading in this direction up Sudden Valley Stream. Just walking up the uh, Sudden Valley uh, Stream um, looking for a suitable campsite up here. I've seen a couple of uh, places so far but the river's miles away. I'll just I'll go up a wee bit further and see what I can find. So uh, here's my tent site, uh, got some trees for stringing my uh, fly up with and um, relatively flat ground for the tent, um, I've got a log that I'm sitting on at the moment to use for a seat, um, the only problem with this site is that the river's about 300 maybe 400 metres away from here but I'll just have to like go do big water resupplies when I need it. Um, I've got four litres of water I filled up on my water bottles um, so what I'll do is I'll um, 
get the fly out and stick it up and then uh, I'll put the tent up and we'll see what we can do with the site. Just have to angle it with the wind really. So um, obviously the first job is I have to clean all these uh, sticks away from the underneath the trees here. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll put the tent there and then I can string the um, I can string the fly up above it um, for a bit of extra protection. Um, and also I'm on the edge of the forest, so I'm less likely to have branches falling down on me. Yeah. So I'll just get all these sticks out of the way. Just look for any widow makers that could fall down on me. You know, trees that might fall down if there's a windstorm. It's relatively good. I'll finish clearing the area and then I'll get the um, tarp out and string it up. So, got the ground sheet out on the ground. I'm um, going to put the tent up on top of it. Um, I had to modify the ground a wee bit, um, take a few rocks out. I had to fill in a few holes. Um, I laid down to make sure that um, the ground was relatively flat and it seems fine to me. So what I'll do is I'll get the tent out um, and I'll put the tent up first and then I'll string the um, I'll string the fly up over the top. And so uh, we're going to be facing out this direction because the wind's coming down the valley. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll try to take the tarp lowish on the back um, and a bit higher at the front. So I'll get the tent out and I'll put the tent up and, um, and then we'll just go from there. So I'm using my Big Agnes um, UL1 today. It's a one person uh, tent. I've um, done a vlog before um, showing you how I put it up. So the uh, Big Agnes is a um, one person freestanding tent. Uh, it's got the central pole system um, where uh, all the poles uh, fold into these um, almost like a junction. Whole uh, 
there's a bit stretched. Gonna have to replace the um, cord. I have to jerry rig it for today. I sorted it out, so um, I'll just put the fly on the tent, just getting it the right way around so the door's on the right side. Yeah, so there you go, got the tent up, uh, and then what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll put the um, fly up over the top somehow to, I might have to spin the tent around a wee bit, but I'll put the fly up over the top for a bit of extra uh, protection. I mean, I'd probably be fine with the tent by itself, but if it rains tonight, like the tent will get really wet and then it's a real pisser to dry it out. Yeah, so I'll sort it out anyway. Just putting some of my gear away in the tent. Sleeping mat, food, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'll get in there and I'll inflate my um, sleeping mat at the moment, uh, in a minute. So I've got a new sleeping mat. It's a Sea to Summit Ultralight Insulated. Um, Karen bought it for my birthday last year, so this is its first outing on our trip. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see um, how it is. Cedar Summit are really good um, mats and equipment. Just uh, gonna inflate my uh, mat and stick it on the tent. So, this is one of those um, inflatable mats that's got like a bag that you can use for inflating it.
so you just basically connect the end here to your sleeping mat um, and then you just pump it up with uh, air from the bag So that took uh, six bags of air to fill up the mat. It's basically just supposed to stop the um, supposed to stop condensation getting inside your uh, air mat and ruining it. Yeah. We'll see how effective it is. Yeah, so it's not a very good pitch. She's, uh, it's a bit off actually, but um, it'll be good enough. I'll have to peg out this closest left hand corner, um, peg it out further away from the tent. There's a tree in the way. I might angle the tent around a wee bit um, towards the right, just so it's a bit further underneath the shelter. Yeah. I mean that would be fine as it is. The water's going to run off it if it rains. Uh, it's giving you a bit of wind protection. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. This is what I can see from where I'm sitting. It's looking back down the Howden River. Bit past time for lunch. Uh, it's um, getting on for three o'clock. So, I've got a udon soup to make, so I'll just uh, fix that up. I see some uh, people walking up the valley over there, heading up to Howden Hut probably. I'll um, try doing it here sitting on the log but if I find it too difficult I'll go, go over underneath the tarp where the tent is.
make sure I pop my lighter away because it's grain. Be easy to lose out here in the grass. Yeah, so this uh, the seed on soap has got udon noodles and um, like flavour packet to add into it. It's even got this wee dish that you can make your udon in, but I don't really need that. I will hold on to it though, it might be useful later. So there's the flavour. Um, Favourite packet in the udon noodles. I will actually make that in the tray because then I can keep my um, I can keep my cocoa clean. If I uh, make those udons in the cocoa, um, then I'm going to have to clean it before I boil any more water. Or it'll taste like udon. There's a um, New Zealand, uh, a South Island uh, bush robin bobbing around in the trees just over here next to me. Yeah, so there was about 400 mil of water, so um, that would have taken less than one and a half minutes to heat it up. Got a damn sand fire in my dinner. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so you just put the hot water in for four minutes and then you put the sauce packets in. Um, and then it should be ready to go. I uh, bought that from a Japanese food shop at Rickerton Mall in Christchurch. Haven't uh, tried one of them before so we'll have to see what it's like. So I've added the uh, soup mix to this um, and there was a packet that said flake on the outside and it had little pieces of um, sea f uh, um, seaweed um, it had some popped rice it looks like um, little pieces of radish and chopped up chives and some other kind of herbs so I just put those in and I'll let them uh, soak for a couple of minutes um, just to soften down a wee bit and then it should be all ready to go I mean, I should have probably brought my other cook set with me so I could cook in the pot. Um, uh, the other food that I have uh, for the rest of this trip is all freeze dried so I just need to heat water and stick it into the bag so that's a lot easier. Um, this was like a last minute thought because I suddenly thought to myself, oh I'm not going to, I don't have any lunch. Like I hadn't put any lunch in my uh, food bag. Yeah. It's 
so uh, I'll have my lunch and then what I'll do for the rest of the afternoon is um, I'll just tidy up my campsite area um, I'll sit inside and uh, read my Kindle for a couple of hours um, and then um, I'll go and do a water resupply run if I need to do that before it gets too dark um, and then like dinner later um, I, I, you know normally if it was a wee bit wetter I'd think about building a fire because there's heaps of wood here I could easily build a fire and keep it going for like maybe two three hours just with the wood that's under the trees immediately here but um, there's a fire ban up in uh, Arthur's Pass at the moment because it's the middle of summer so you know obviously you can't have a fire in those situations I don't want to burn down uh, Arthur's Pass National Park be easy for it to go as well the grass around here is all really dry um, and dry metagory and under the trees here there's like lots of leaves and branches and that stuff would just go up like nobody's business yeah so anyway I'll have my uh, lunch and then uh, and then we'll have a look around inside the tent so yeah The radish in this thing is uh, daikon. It's really, really hot. <laughs> it's like really, really spicy. This is actually really nice. Um, I've had these before, but I've never taken them for tramping meals, but I'll be doing that more often in the future. It's nice to sometimes have a, you know, a beefier soup that's got like noodles or lots of veggies or meat in it um, when you're tramping. Cup of soups are really nice but sometimes you want a bit more. Uh, I'm intending to do more of these camping trips in 2023. Um, this is the first for this year, but uh, I've got a few ideas of places to go to like over the rest of the summer to do some camping. Yeah, this is just really a dummy run to check everything out and see what kind of equipment I need to take with me, um, how easy it is to actually do a camp like this. I'll, uh, I'll be recording them and like bringing them to you. It's almost like a um, seafood stock, the soup that's with this. It's very, very nice, it's uh, salty. I was feeling a, a bit off because I hadn't had anything to eat for lunch. It was good. Very enjoyable. I'll go, I think I'll go get, I've got some uh, three and one coffees. I think I'll make myself a hot drink as well. Um, 
and then I can go have a sit down inside the tent for a wee while. I've got a, um, a lemon iced tea here. I'm going to have it as a hot drink rather than a cold drink. Don't have to totally boil the water because this is water that I bought from home. Uh, the stuff that I get out of the river and use later, um, I'll have to boil that uh, to a good rolling boil. Um, I do have some. Um, I do have some water purification tablets. Um, I couldn't find my uh, water filter before I left home. Just using my C to Summit X mug. You would have seen lots of people using these, they're like folding out. Yeah, uh, I'm just really warming the water up, I don't even need it boiling. Because um, I don't like, like boiling hot drinks, I normally wait till they cool down a wee bit. So I've got a small 110 gram gas canister and I've also got a, a half of a 350. So I'm not going to run out of gas. Uh, this is just a one day trip this time. Um, later on I might try some multi day trips. Jeez, that's going to be strong. That makes one litre of. I should have only put half of it in the. In the. I'll have to tip some in. It'll be far too strong. I won't be able to drink it. Yeah, this log is quite handy as a as a seder. It'd be much better if it was over closer to the tent. It's all right though. Just have to use what you have. Don't want to move stuff around too much. Oh yeah, rich and sweet. It's actually a cold drink, it's got um, artificial sweetener in it. Um, but I've got three, three small uh, drink sachets. Man, that's hot. Haven't seen any sand fires yet, but um, I think it's because the wind's blowing away, but um, I would expect them to come out later, like when it starts getting dark. Yeah. I've seen a few, but I got bitten by a couple when I got out of the car at the um, car park over at Howden Shelter. But um, that was it, like I haven't 
encountered any apart from that. Really nice day at the moment, but the uh, weather's supposed to change a bit. Um, uh, tonight there's supposed to be some showers, uh, and then going into tomorrow early in the morning some showers, but then it's going to be fine after that. I'll, I'll be off and home by then. Yeah, so I'll just, I'll just tuck in my drink and uh, then I'll uh, come back and show you the tent. Yeah, so I'm just sitting in the tent. Seeing fires getting a bit bitey. Yeah. It's, uh... 4.30 at the moment so I'll think about having dinner probably about sometime between 5 and 6 just want to kind of spread it out a wee bit you know um, otherwise you run out of stuff to do yeah otherwise I see that's one of the things when you're camping you know especially when you've got bugs biting you end up uh, you end up being in the tent and going to sleep at like 9 o'clock at night and then you're awake at like 5 in the morning it's the inside of the tent this is my new uh, uh, mat that I've got it's quite comfortable, I was laying down on it, it's really really comfortable uh, it's wider than my other one that I had Yeah, I'll have to take it out for a few trips and see how it performs. It's all my stuff up at the uh, head of the tent. Just going to resupply with water. The uh, river bed is mostly dry except for one channel that's oh, about maybe 200 metres off in that direction. So I'll just walk over and get some water. Sudden Valley Stream. That's my water source. Yeah, just uh, looking for the easiest way to get down to the side of the river without breaking my neck. Uh, that water is relatively clean because there's nothing upstream of us. Uh, but I'll still I'll still put some uh, water purification tablets in it. There's my camp over there, you can see the uh, orange of the um, fly up. Not too far away from the river. Uh, not safe to be walking down here once it gets dark though, it's going to be too dangerous. I'm just looking out over the uh, flats out towards the river and I just saw a group of people uh, walking back down to the car park at the um, trailhead. Yeah. Haven't seen anybody coming up here so 
you know, um, maybe the people, if you were walking up to Sudden Valley, um, it's like about a four and a half hour walk, so they were probably well past here um, when I got here. They probably all walked up there. Anyone that walked up would have gone up early this morning. Yeah, there's not as many people up here as I thought there would be. But then, you know, lots of stuff's open now, so um, people have got other options. Um, I mean, I know two people at work were heading over to the islands um, for the holidays, so that was something we didn't have this time last year. Yeah, I'm just going to get my Kindle and I'll just like sit and read my Kindle for a wee while. Gotta put some uh, water purification tablets in that water. I've got Aquatabs, um, which is the brand that's available here in New Zealand. There's a whole lot of other different ones. You just can't get them. Um, Aquamira is another thing that they sell here um, in certain shops, but it's not widely available. So these are um, <coughs> these are chlorine tablets, and you stick them on the water. Um, you put them on the water, and you basically leave them for half an hour, and then the water is good for drinking. Uh, kills like almost everything that's in them. Like I was saying before, I've got a water filter, but I couldn't find it before I left home. Um, I, I know where it is in the garage, but it was just like I didn't have enough time to sort it out. Yeah, so uh, I have to get that out when I get home because it's a much better thing for using for filtering the water because it takes out all the particles like dust and shit. Um, when I filled my uh, wind burner up before with water, like there was some uh, bits of uh, rocks and stones and stuff on the bottom that came out of the river, so I had to tip it out and like get a new supply of water. Uh, that's looking up onto Walshed uh, Hill. Walshed Hill um, track starts from uh, the car park and goes up to the top up there and then um, there's a wee uh, bald area up the top starting there where um, you walk over that bald area and then there's like a wee tarn up on top um, yeah so it's big enough you can uh, take water from it and um, camp around it there's some flat areas around it so Going to go up there sometime. Just sitting on my tree stump again. Um, Going to get done already. Just in case the weather turns turns bad. Yeah, better to be better to be prepared than not. Um, this is what I'm having for dinner tonight. It's uh, Real Meals. Um, it's the uh, beef stroganoff. I've had this before. It's really, really nice. Um, I'll show you when I'm making it up what it's like. Those Real Meals are probably the best um, freeze-dried meals that you can get in New Zealand at the moment. The quality of them is really, really good. Just looking for my lighter. I've also got a can of wine to have with my dinner. So uh, this is a um, Brancott Estate Pinot, Pinot Gris. Um, uh, Brancott Estate make a couple of these wines in cans um, 
it's the easiest way to carry the stuff unless you're going to carry it like in a plastic bag that you're going to reuse or um, if you have like a plastic water bottle is what I normally pop mine in yeah so I'll have that with my dinner and um, I'll just have a coffee afterwards as well obviously get the um, get the stuff cooking Gotta get that cooker a bit flatter. These things could really do with the PCO water. Uh, igniter on them. Got a whole lot of sticks and shit on the bottom of my um, it's not fantastic. Wind's died down a lot. Might not be that windy tonight. I thought it might be quite windy because the wind was blowing quite strong before, but yeah, it's died right off. So that's the uh, interior of the um, beef stroganoff. So it's the beef mints, uh, flavourings, and then it's got like little noodles in there as well. This is one of the nicer of that range. Well, they're all good, but um, I like this one uh, especially. I'm just waiting for my uh, freeze-dried meal to reconstitute, and then I'll tuck into it. Um, 10 minutes, just got to wait for 10 minutes. Dinner's ready, about to tuck in. Open my can of uh, wine up. Be nicer if it was in the river, but I'm a bit too far away. Can't keep an eye on it. Still be good though. Finish my dinner. Just drinking my can of wine at the moment. Sun will go down fast here because like it goes behind the hills. Yeah. Just climbing under the tent. Um, there's a few bugs flying around so just sit in here and read uh, my Kindle for a wee while. There's quite a few birds coming in looking at me. Seen a couple of robins. Uh, South Island Robin, um, there's some kind of bird just on the tree next to us that I can't actually see at the moment. I don't know what kind of bird it is, it's like some kind of like finch or something. I haven't seen one of them before. I heard some uh, kaka before as well flying down the valley. There's quite a good uh, population of uh, kaka here in uh, Arthur's Pass National Park. Numbers have been picking up like over the last five years. <clears throat> Just inside the tent, got my lights going, and all my junk's piled up at this end. Yeah, it's 
couple of South Island robins that keep coming around and night messing around with my rubbish and stuff. I had to retreat in here because of the uh, enormous number of sandflies. There's a lot of them. <laughs> I don't know if you can see them, but there's piles and piles of them flying around. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, it's the next day. Uh, it's probably about 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I'm going to get up and start getting about my business soon. Um, I'm just sitting in the tent at the moment because there's like literally thousands of sandflies <laughs> all over the inside of the tent. Uh, they're not in here with me but as soon as I step outside they're going to eat me alive. So uh, I'll try to uh, pack up as much stuff as I can and then um, I'll jump out of the tent and just take the tent down. Yeah. So uh, I packed up as much gear as I could. Um, I think what I'm going to have to do is, there's so many sandflies, um, what I'm going to have to do is get out of the tent, take the tent fly off um, to let some of these sandflies dissipate. Um, because there's so many of them, if I try doing anything in the tent, like the sandflies will just come in. Uh, and then if I walk away, they should all fly away because they're all, they can smell me. They're all trying to get into, um, like, get to me. Um, so, yeah, so I'll climb out and take the tent fly off. Um, and then um, I'll just uh, boil up some water for a cup of coffee and some breakfast. Um, and then just pack the tent up and then I'll be heading off. Yeah, so I've taken the flies off to try to get rid of some of the sand flies. They're bloody voracious. I'm not going to be able to uh, cook any breakfast here. There's just too many sand flies. I'll have to um, pack up and I'll just get something for breakfast on the way home. Yeah, so I just finished packing all my gear up. Because it's just, there's just too many sandflies. Can't stay still for long enough to to do any um, tidying up or cooking or anything. Yeah. So. I'll just do a real fast and dirty uh, pack up and then I'll organise everything properly when I get home. where the conditions are a wee bit better. I'll have to um, air everything out anyway. So when I get home I can just um, I can just lay everything out and uh, fold it up properly and put it away for the next trip once it's dried. Covering myself in bushments, that might 
cut back on the sand flies a wee bit. Just uh, packing up my cockpit. Uh, I'm going to pack all my stuff in my bag and then I'll head off. So I've got on my gear packed I'm uh, just about to head off um, just do one last uh, look over and just make sure I haven't left any bits of rubbish behind but yeah uh, that's basically more or less restored back to as it was before well farewell to that uh, camping spot I might come back sometime there's some uh, fan towels on the trees right next to me here Uh, just got to climb up on top of that uh, um, river terrace and then uh, walk down to the uh, electric fence. That's looking up the Howden Valley. Uh, I'll go for a trip up to Howden Hut sometime uh, so that you can see what it's like. It's a really nice um, hut up there. Um, always quite busy at summertime, that's why I haven't gone up there this time. Or I would have packed lighter and like gone up to Howden Hut. So, uh, just have to walk along the fence line. The uh, stile's about um, 200 metres down in that direction. So we'll walk down to the stile, climb over the fence. Um, and then we just have to cross the Howden River over there in the distance. The um, car park is just at the end of that ridge there. So we'll get going. Uh, just going to go over the Howden River. <coughs> um, I'm going to try having a look up at this end of the river this time. Um, because I saw someone crossing the river higher up, uh, closer to uh, Woolshed Hill. And it looked like it was a wee bit shallower, so I'll go have a look there. The Howden River is a multi-braided river, like most of the rivers up in this part of the country. Um... This is low, low flow at the moment. Uh, I've seen this from bank to bank before. Incrossable. 
Um, usually you, you helped a wee bit because the river spreads out over a couple of different um, river channels. But um, since they built that big embankment over there, um, it's really dug the river out just into one fairly deep channel. So you just got to take a bit of care when you're crossing over. Just try to find the um, shallowest part for crossing the river. It's looking up the Howden River. That valley up there on the right hand side, that's the East Polter. So from here we just have to walk up and over the end of that ridge uh, that comes down from Wallshed Hill uh, and back to the car park. So that's uh, one of several paths that lead up to the top. Yeah, final bits, just walking back through the forest. So the uh, trek up to Wallshed Hill, um, you first pass a couple of old school lodges uh, just up on the next river terrace um, and then it's quite a steep climb um, up for the rest of the hill. Yeah, have to go up there sometime. It's a good walk. Yeah, so I'm back at the um, car park. Um, I'll just jump in the car and I'll head back, head back to Christchurch. End of the trek. It's the uh, Howden Day Shelter. Day Shelter only. Got some uh, tables for cooking it, open fireplace. There's a water tank on the outside of the hut, that's a new thing. Yeah, so uh, that's the end of that camping trip. Uh, it was okay, um, just trying out some equipment to see what I need to take next time. Um, I'll do a bit of a load change, like for example, I'll use a different pack. This one's a bit too heavy. Yeah, but it was good, so um, keep an eye out for the next one.